We welcome Pro Football Focus's Brad Spielberger to the show, and man, is there a lot to discuss. Brad, you examined some numbers with Shane Waldron's offense during his three years in Seattle. What were your takeaways, both good and bad? Yeah, there's certainly a lot of positive, of course. He's not a perfect candidate, but I do think it's a great hire for the Chicago Bears. And the things that jump out, this is a pass-first offense, ninth in pass rate in the NFL. It's an aggressive offense on early downs, which is a better signal of being successful. By that, I mean he converts a first down into a new first down at the second highest rate in the NFL. Um, the, the, the flip side, there are some issues on late downs and third down conversion rate. He was in the bottom of the NFL. Some issues in the red zone at times. I do think part of that is tied to to a young offensive line and often injured offensive line, but he, he is a good coordinator. He gets, he creates space for his receivers. You see a lot of creativity, weird formations, weird alignments, a lot of pre-snap motion, and also a fun one, no matter the quarterback, the third highest rate of throwing the ball down the field, trying to create explosive shot plays, push the ball. Um, but I think it was a great hire overall. Now see all of those things to me translate to Justin Fields' skill set. But I know that they also translate to a lot of quarterback skill sets, as we saw with Geno Smith, of course. So what do you think that means for who the Bears' potential quarterback would be next season? And that's the big thing, too, is the messaging coming out about this hire was we want a guy that no matter who is going to be under center, a guy that can work with different quarterback skill sets and get the most out of them and truly cater an offense to their skill set. And I think we saw a little bit of oil and water at times with the previous OC. You look at Waldron, not just resurrecting Geno Smith's career, but he worked with the Jared Goff in, in L.A., a totally different quarterback, under center, play action. You're looking at more, um, you know, shotgun, RPO, still some play action for Geno Smith, all these various components how they're attacking defenses middle of the field outside the numbers I think that is the biggest thing I think he has proven he's a guy that is not going to try to force you know his scheme or what he likes to do on the quarterback he's going to sit back learn what they like to do and build around their skill set their talent so that's about the mo most you could ask for for an offensive coordinator especially coming to a new coaching staff just the adaptability and the flexibility and what they what they do and still being successful and Shade Waldron checks all those boxes do you think it does give an indication either way of who the Bears would go with under center next season? So I do to the from the standpoint of I think Waldron was a very sought after coordinator. I know there's still a lot of uncertainty around the NFL, some jobs still remaining open, but we know this is an attractive tree. Everyone wants their, you know, Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay tree. He is a branch of the Sean McVay tree. Also has some Patriots background, a bunch of different stops along his NFL career, but I do from the standpoint of, I think if you're him, you probably thought you were going to be a head coach candidate this upcoming cycle, and instead you're taking another OC job in a different place. He's from the Pacific Northwest and going across the country now. To me, it just says, hey, the selling point is, look at Bobby Sloak in Houston. He goes in, coaches number two overall pick quarterback, and now he's getting a bunch of interviews. If you come to Chicago and you get a great rookie season or maybe first two years out of a number one overall pick quarterback, you will be a head coach. And I know that I also could apply to a reclamation project, so to speak. He just did that with Geno Smith, and he's not a head coach. He's an OC again. So I just think the selling point is really big there on, you know, coach up a rookie, help him develop, and NFL teams will come calling for head coaching opportunities. I agree. I think when you have a good coach, you can do both. And the Geno Smith part of this, I think, is very significant. Something else I want to note is also how that offense could be similar to Luke Getze's, but in the details like you mentioned, whether it's RPO percentage or more play action. I know that's something you noted specifically is the use of play action. Yeah, so they are going to run a wide zone rushing attack, which was what Luke Getze initially came here to do. He actually did kind of pivot uh, quietly to more of an inside zone gap scheme, did some different things that, I mean, I think the run game has been great. I think Chris Morgan, the offensive line coach, also deserves a lot of credit, um, and he does get it from people you talk to inside of Hallis Hall. There's a reason why he's still on the staff, and he is viewed as a huge positive there. I think the difference you'll see, and some of the things that a lot of us fans were kind of clamoring for with the Geno Smith, the play action, whether it was under center or shotgun was a lot of more boot rollouts boot action to get half field reads some high low concepts floods and different things to really just okay it's a simple read high to low or a triangle concept on one side of the field the fields can read the whole field we've seen him go through progressions at the college level and the nfl level but i do think they weren't fully utilizing his legs his ability to throw on the move and still be accurate while moving to his right 
like stuff like or is left like stuff like that i think you'll see more of and, and the creativity comes with that too where you saw Shane Waldron really put defenders in conflict in Seattle. These second-level guys, these linebackers, they're biting on the play action or they're falling for a particular route and clearing things up. They'll just make it much easier and I think will more accentuate the, the athletic ability that Justin Fields has with his legs and his arm. Now, I know your specialty, of course, is free agent market, cap understanding, and this offense needs good linemen. We've seen the issues the Bears have had at center. So as a free agent specialist, what do you think the Bears could do with center and who might be available? Yeah, this is a beautiful uh, circumstance as well. So, so Seahawks center this year, Evan Brown, uh, a bit of a journeyman so far in his NFL career, has played some guard, played some center, um, was good this year. I thought he was very competent in this offense. You saw he kind of battled a rookie and, and, and retained the job at center for the team uh, this year. But also, even beyond the Seattle days, I mentioned the Rams connection. Rams center Coleman Shelton could be a free agent this offseason as well. He have to opt out of his contract. I won't get too into the weeds, but could be a free agent. And he worked with Shane Waldron, also a guy that can play center and can play guard. But most importantly, both guys that have shown a proficiency in this particular system. They are good movers to the second level. They're good in this Y zone rushing attack. I think both of those guys immediately kind of jump to the top of your list as guys that are comfortable, that know Shane Waldron, and also the experience, too, of whether it's fields or rookie quarterback. Yes, it's a similar offense, but it's still a new offense. And if you bring in a center that knows the offense really, really well, it just makes the whole operation easier for everybody. Now, also, PFF's free agent rankings are out. You, of course, had a huge part of that. You have Jalen Johnson ranked ninth. So what went into your ranking of Jalen Johnson, and what do you think happens to him with the Bears? Yeah, Jalen Johnson was the highest graded corner in all of PFF this year. He, he was sensational. Frankly, you could even argue he left a little bit of value on the field, too, with some of those dropped interceptions. But, of course, being in perfect position, playing technically sound, and being able to almost pick off even more passes than he, than he already did just shows how good he was this year. Um, he's also 24 years old still um, entering free agency, which our number two corner, Legereus Steed in Kansas City, phenomenal football player, but 27. So it just shows the difference there. Um, you know, you want to get a, a toolsy player, a guy that I think can fit in multiple different schemes. He, he's got good size and like we thought we saw this year is super super productive this year which was kind of maybe one final knock on his game um i, I think he's going to be highly sought after if he does leave chicago uh we know ryan pole said he's not going anywhere uh he deserves to be a top 10 on that list he is a rare find in free agency when you get a young proven talent like jalen johnson now do you think that that can mean a franchise tag and if your corners say that's a good position to be a recipient of maybe that franchise tag number even if it's not ideal yeah, that'll be interesting, right? The, the messaging back and forth has been you know, kind of interesting here where obviously he puts in the trade request at the deadline. He said in interviews, I want to say on 670 the score or somewhere in Chicago that he wasn't trying to become the highest paid cornerback in the NFL, but just wanted to get a deal in line with what he thought his production warranted. Ole said he thought they'd had a bunch of good conversations, but then the talks kind of fell down uh, between him and the agency there. And then, of course, you keep them, you don't trade them, and you once again get back to these positive vibes. He wants to stay in Chicago. He likes the building. He likes the teammates, likes the coaching staff, all of these things. But then recently he came back out and did say again – on the airwaves that he thinks he should be the highest paid cornerback in football. And I'm not here to say whether he should or shouldn't, but I just do wonder if Chicago feels the same way. Um, I, I do think a franchise tag, even if they tag him and then use that extra time to still try to work out a long-term deal you have until mid-July to do so, I, I think there's probably a decent chance that does happen. Let's all go through our lives with the slightest amount of maybe fraction of Jalen Johnson's confidence, and I think we might be happier people. <laughs> Brad Spielberger, I know you can. You're always working on PFF. We appreciate the time. Thanks so much for having me.